A.K. Azad Productions. Welcome to Chrissy Whitehead, Series 1, Episode 3, Chrissy in Colombo. Before we hear it, let me provide a brief introduction to this episode. This third episode in the first series of Chrissy Whitehead was made by me, Abdul Azad, at age 29 in 2002, three years after Let Bygones Be Bygones. It was extended by me 13 years later at age 41 in January 2015. This story is about how my character Chrissy Whitehead becomes a household name in America after appearing on the Jerry Springer show, bumps into a friend who helps him to appear in the American TV show Columbo, returns to England, becomes unemployed for three years, struggles to force his way back into television, and then gets arrested and imprisoned for beating up a security guard outside the X-Factor studios in London. This episode also has some swearing in it, and is therefore for those of you who are 15 or over. I did not like swearing, even as my character, but had to put some swearing in this particular comedy because I had already created the main character and one of the funny things about him was that he swore a lot. So that was my brief introduction to this episode. Let us now listen to Chrissy Whitehead, Series 1, Episode 3, Chrissy in Colombo. A.K. Azad Productions presents... Chrissy Whitehead, created by Abdul Azad, starring Abdul Azad. The title of this episode is Chrissy in Colombo. Let Bygones Be Bygones is finishing, and Mr. Jerry Springer is talking to his assistant. I don't want to see these limeys on my show ever again, you got that? Okay, Mr. Springer, why did you allow them to come on my show anyway? We didn't have any other guests this week, sir. Okay, well, get the limeys out of the studio as soon as possible. Okay, Mr. Springer. Outside the studio, Chrissy wants to go back to England and is apologizing to David. I'm sorry I hit you, David. You broke my nose, Mr. Whitehead. I can't believe you did that to me in front of an American audience. Oh, I hope the newspapers back in England don't find out about this. Ah, oh, my nose. Does it hurt? Of course it bloody does. I'm sorry, David. Yes, well, I'm not interested in your apology. I'm going back to England with the others. Can I come with you, David? No. Oh, David. David walks out and leaves Chrissy alone. The next day... Chrissy is out walking on the streets of America and keeps bumping into people who recognize him like this little boy. Hey, you're Chrissy Whitehead. That's right, young man. And what's your name? Harry. Hello, Harry. You're famous, aren't you? Am I? Yeah, I saw you on the Jerry Springer show. You are great, man. Well, thank you. Can I have your autograph? Uh, well, yes, of course, but I don't have a pen or paper. Here's a pen, and here's my autograph book. Thank you. I've never done this before. What shall I write? Just write, To Harry, Best Wishes, Chrissy Whitehead. Okay. To Harry, Best Wishes, Chrissy Whitehead. There you go. Thanks, man. Thank you, little sir. No problem. See you around. Yes, bye. As he continues to walk, Chrissy suddenly gets lost and walks into the office of a building. Hello, sir. Can you tell me how I can get back to my hotel I'm staying in, please? Ah, you're Chrissy Whitehead. That's right. I'm Bob. Sit down. Thank you, Bob. Now, Chrissy, 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 you've become a household name here in America. Do you know that? I don't, Bob, no. Well, because of your appearance on the Jerry Springer Show. Oh, right. Yes. Now, listen, Chrissy, I'm one of the biggest agents in America. I have lots of big names on my client list. Can I be your agent? 
Can you get me work? Of course I can. Would you like to act on TV? Yes, of course. Well, how about this? What's that? Would you like to appear on the TV show Columbo? Oh, Columbo! I like that detective. Bloody genius! Oh, sorry about my language, Bob. That's all right. Would you like to appear in Columbo? I would, but what part would I be playing? You'll be playing yourself. Really? Yes. A few weeks later, Chrissy is in the set of Columbo, ready to do a scene. Right. You're ready, yes? Yes. Who's that over there, Bob? That's the director. When he says action, you do your scene, all right? Right. Look, they're all getting ready, so go there now. Go. Everybody ready. And action. In the tread of one of those tires with some grains of impacted tobacco. Give me that tobacco. This is the same tobacco that Professor Nicholson imported from England. This is the same tobacco that he used in his pipe. The same pipe that was crushed in his driveway by the car that killed him. The same car that you signed out for, the car that you were driving. This is a free market. I'm not finished. Mr. White. Yes, Mr. Colombo, sir. Where are you employed, Mr. Wayne? Oh, the Mangala Motel, Mr. Colombo, sir. Do you recognize anybody in this room? Um, yes, that gentleman and the lady that left a minute ago, Mr. Colombo, sir. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, yeah. Where have you seen this gentleman and that lady before, Mr. Whitehead? Uh, at the motel, Mr. Colombo, sir, on the weekends. Uh... <laughs> Dad, I swear to you, that man is lying! Arrest him, Mr. Oh, Walker. yeah, I'm lying now, boy. The the way no, down. why don't you, eh? Thank you very much, Mr. Whitehead. If I move with Bryce in the car on the way down. Sir. And cut. Thanks, everybody. Three months later, Chrissy is in Bob the agent's office. You're trying to tell me something, right, Bob? I am, Chrissy. What is it? Come on, tell me. Well, Chrissy, how can I say this, but uh, I can't find you any other work here in America. So what am I going to do then, Bob? I don't know. I might go back to England then. Well, if that's what you want to do... Yeah. Yeah, it is. Thank you for everything you've done for me, Bob. No problem. Good luck, Chrissy. Thank you, Bob. Chrissy returns to England, where he spends three years trying to find work, but is unable to. Here, Chrissy is walking in the streets, and keeps bumping into people who do not recognise him, like this old lady. Watch where you're going! Oh, sorry, madam. You've got eyes, haven't you? Why don't you use them? I am using my eyes. Then how comes you bumped into me, you moron? Well, don't you recognise me, madam? How can I recognise you? I don't know you from Adam. I'm Chrissy Whitehead. Chrissy who? Chrissy Whitehead. I'm a celebrity. I've been on radio and television. I don't listen to the radio or watch the television. Oh. Yes, now if you'll excuse me, I'm late for a meeting. Right, bye. The old lady walks off. Chrissy is now at home with his son. Dad? Yes, my dear son. What are you doing? I'm making some phone calls, my dear son. Why? Well, I've been unemployed for three years now, but I've just had an idea. What idea? I'm going to go back on TV. TV? Well, what show are you going to go on? The X Factor. How are you going to get on there? I'll find out where the studios are, and then I'll force my way in. Will you be able to do that, Dad? Of course I will, my dear son. A few days later, Chrissy is outside the X-Factor studios in London and faces a security guard. Hello, my old mucker. Hello, sir. Would you mind getting out of my way, please? Where do you want to go, sir? I want to go in there. You're not allowed in there, sir. Look, just get out of my way, will you? Sorry, sir. I said get out of my fucking way. I can't let you in, sir. Okay. I'm going to count to three, and if you don't get out of my way, I'll be the 
scaring the hell out of you. You ready? I'm going to start counting now. One, two, three. Right, that does it. You take that. Take that. Take that. And that. And that. And that. Take that. And that. Chrissy starts punching and kicking the security guard until the police arrive. Uh, I think he's fainted. There's no one else here, so I assume you must have done this to him, sir. Did you do this to him? I did, Mr. Police Officer. What's your name? Chrissy Whitehead. Can you tell me what happened? And why you did this to him, Mr. Whitehead? I only wanted to get in to sing, but he wouldn't let me. Okay, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. Chrissy gets arrested, and in the courtroom, his trial is taking place. I have no more questions for you, Mr. Whitehead. We'll now hear your final statements, please. Okay, Your Honour. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please believe me when I tell you that I am guilty <coughs> of nothing more than wanting to be famous. Ladies and gentlemen, we have heard all the evidence presented here today and I have therefore no hesitation in announcing that the sentence of this court is that you, Mr. Chrissy Whitehead, be imprisoned for one year. Do you have anything to say? This is not fair! You have been listening to Chrissy Whitehead, all voices by Abdul Azad, music composed and performed by Abdul Azad, sound recording and editing by Abdul Azad, written, produced and directed by Abdul Azad. The characters and incidents portrayed and the names herein are fictitious, and any similarity to the name, character or history of any person is entirely coincidental and unintentional. Chrissy Whitehead is an AK Azad production for the Azad Family Collection. A.K. Azad Productions.